Hi, my name is Dave Tamlow. I'm a Big Fix technical advisor based in the Chicago area. I've been working with Big Fix for about 10 years now. If you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can use the QR code on the screen. In the previous video of this two-part series, we went over what you need to know for setting up your real server in order to install Big Fix. In this video, we'll talk through the installation. There are three main components of the Big Fix platform. The Big Fix server, the Big Fix web report server, and the Big Fix Web UI. We'll be installing all three of these components on the same RHEL 7 box. We'll also be installing the DB2 server locally in this machine. This is a perfectly valid configuration, assuming that you've sized, sized your server according to the capacity planning guide that we talked about in the first video. So now I'm on the RHEL 7 box that I'll be doing the installation on. First, I'll download the Big Fix installer from the HCL Flex portal. So Google search it and navigate to the site. I log in with my credentials. And the first thing I'm presented with is uh, my license and delivery portal. Your view may be different. Uh, that's what I see based on my credentials. So I go into application security and here are all my big fix entitlements. And I'll see entries for all the modules I've licensed. I can select any of them as they all contain the Big Fix platform installer. It's the same installer regardless of which module I choose to select. The first time I select a module, there's a EULA I need to accept. And then from there, it takes me to the available downloads. Here I'll see the installers for the various platform versions. I can download the latest one or I can download an older version. If I install an older version, I can always upgrade it through the platform later. In this case, I'll be installing the latest version, so I select that one for download. Once the download's complete, I'll find it in my downloads folder from the command line. As I mentioned earlier, the Big Fix installer is text-based, so I'll be running it from a terminal window. First, I'll do a quick table of contents listing to see if the tarball was built using relative or absolute path file names. I can see that it's relative, so I'll explode it into my current directory. Once that's done, I'll verify that I have a license authorization file available for the install. The license authorization file is an XML file, and we can examine it to see what it contains. Basically, it contains the information on what we'll be installing. Now, before I start, I'll do a quick review of my file system layout. I have separate mount points for home, opt, var, and var opt. And just to confirm that we're doing a fresh install, I'll check those directories to see if they have anything Big Fix related in them. As you'll see, they don't. Back in my home directory, these are the files I end up with after exploding the tarball. I had manually put the license authorization file in the same directory for easier access. Before I run the install.sh script, first I'll make the screen bigger to make it easier to read but I'll also verify that DB2 hasn't been installed yet either. I can check Etsy password and I see that there is no DB2 related users. I can check the home directory and there's no DB2 related home directories. So now I'm ready to run the installation script. And this installation script is gonna cover installing um, DB2 as part of installing uh, Big Fix. So the installation script when it starts does some prereq checking. And I find that there's an RPM package I need. So I'm opening another terminal window to verify that I've got yum set up and properly configured on this machine. Uh, if I do, then I'll just let the installer uh, apply the missing packages. I do have yum set up. So now I'll verify that the live PNG file 
or RPM, excuse me, is available uh, in my repo. Now that I see that it is, I'll come back to my installation window and pick option two. So now I pick two and it goes through and handles the installation of the missing dependencies. Now it wants to know uh, what my installation type is. I can either do a 30 day evaluation license or in my case, I'm gonna do a production license. Um, there is a EULA that I need to accept uh, for the installer, separate from the EULA that we saw in uh, the FlexNet portal. And the EULAs are actually provided in the subdirectory um, under the uh, files I exploded. So I can navigate to them, which I'm doing in a separate window, and I can review the EULA. And now I can come back and accept the terms of the agreement so I can move on. So now I get my choices of what I want to install. There are a lot of different combinations. I'm going to do all components, the server, the client, the web reports, and the web UI. But if I wanted to do different smaller combinations, I could pick the appropriate choice and do just that. Like I said, in my case, I'm going to uh, pick option one to install everything. Next, it wants to know about the database. Uh, I'm going to tell it that I'm going to use a single database. I'm not doing replication or any kind of distributed services architecture. Uh, I'm going to use a local database. It's going to be installed in this machine. And then I'm going to provide values for some of the other installation options, uh, the folders for some of the different components, uh, and then taking all of the defaults that are provided. So it's prompting also for things like port numbers for web reports, for web UI. Uh, and then next, uh, we're going to handle the installation of DB2. Notice that it's detected that DB2 is not installed in this local machine. So it gives me the choice to install it. And it presents me with the default settings, uh, the DB2 instance owner, which by default is DB2 inst1, the port it's going to use, so on and so forth. So I want to go ahead and I want to proceed with the installation of DB2. And it's going to do a prereq check and it discovers again that I'm missing a package. Now I know that YUM's available from before, so I'm just going to do a quick test to make sure that the package that's needed is in my repo, which it is. So I will go ahead and pick the option to have YUM automatically install it and then proceed with the installation. So once the prereqs are installed, then it's going to go ahead and actually run through the, the um, DB2 installation. The DB2 installer is included with the package I downloaded. You can optionally uh, download just the DB2 installer from the, the HCL Flex portal if you want to install DB2 in advance. If you choose to do that, I would recommend having a GUI set up um, either a desktop or have X Windows forwarding set up for your terminal session because when the DB2 installer runs on its own, by default, it runs a GUI interface. Uh, in this case, it's running in silent mode, so um, it's doing all of the work based on all of the defaults that we agreed to uh, further up in the screen. Now I'm letting this part run in real time so that you can see uh, how long this process takes. All right, so now as part of the installation, we're going to uh, set the administrative user password for DB2. So I key that in. Uh, you won't see any characters appear uh, while you're typing. And then once I specify it, uh, then it prompts for the verification, you know, standard stuff. 
And now it's proceeding with the installation of DB2. Again, I'm letting this part run in real time so that you can get a sense of uh, just how quick this process is. And notice now that uh, it's going through the validation of the installation of DB2 and it says it was complete. So now we're back to aspects of the uh, big fix installation.